Hello ladies and gents, my name is Jeremy and today I'm going to be talking about season 2 of Doctor Who. That unintentionally rhymed and I feel dirty now that I said that. So while there is a whole lot that I want to say about season 2, I really want to focus on Rose because I have a couple of seasons that I can talk about, 10 as the Doctor can talk about his decisions and the way that he acts later on. And on top of it, I read something on Tumblr that made a lot of sense to me, is that Doctor Who is a story about the companions. It's not so much a story about the Doctor, it's about the companions that grew with him over time and about their story. And this particular season, I think, really helped Rose in a very positive way. And the way that it ended was very sad and emotional for me. Unlike season one, where when it ended, it didn't really make me sad or emotional, it just felt like a proper progression into the next stage, where I feel like season two really left me with a lot of very sad, heartbreaking feelings. To me, Rose in season one is very one-dimensional, she's just selfish and doesn't really think about the consequences of her actions, and she ultimately just screws everything up. However, in the second season, I feel like while she still has a little bit of that selfishness to her, she's growing from her decisions, she's growing as a person, she's growing into herself as a, as a maturing woman. She's seeing the universe in a different way, and I think that she sees it less as a playground and more as an opportunity for her to challenge herself as a person. And on top of it, She's gotten a lot quippier, she's a lot more humorous, and I think that in general her character has just really complexified in a lot of ways. I don't know if complexified is a word, but it's happening today. List of episodes that I loved. I loved the Moisturize Me Cassandra episode. As Jacob has pointed out to me, Billy Piper is a fantastic actress that she was able to change her entire tone and persona. Even her facial expressions were totally different and I really appreciated her as an actress that much more that she was able to envelop that character, that Cassandra character, and integrate that with her Rose character. On top of it, I kind of like the idea of like zombie infections and zombie plagues and there was something very zombie-ish about that episode and I just dug it in so many ways. The werewolf episode was probably my favorite of this entire season because of the silliness that Rose showed in this episode and I feel like there was something that was so fun about her that I hadn't seen in any other episode, just her challenging the queen, oh we're not amused, and asking her that again and again and again, and then finally at the end, you know, she got her, we are not amused, and she just thought that was hysterical, and I loved her relationship with Ten in that one, because I feel like the two of them worked really well together, and it was an early adventure for them, and they just meshed in, in a really awesome way, and I loved their chemistry. I think that that is something that I really appreciated about Ten and Rose, is that not that Nine and Rose didn't have good chemistry, but there was just something very forced about it, and there was again like that weird, like pseudo-sexual, like we're a ma, or you're my dad and I'm your daughter, but we're kind of like brother and sister, but we kind of want to bone each other, you know, like. There was something strange about the chemistry between them, but I really liked the chemistry between Rose and Ted. Oh gosh. The Girl in the Fireplace was a super emotional episode for me. I really liked the idea of time travel within time travel, and I just liked that episode. There was something so cool about it and, and very challenging about the idea of that particular episode. It was just a spectacular episode. And the impossible freaking planet. That was such a, a mind-blowing, crazy episode. And it still gives me chills thinking about it. I have goosebumps right now thinking about that episode. And it was just a really compelling story. And there was something very mysterious. I went a little Bubba Walters. There was a little, it was very mysterious and thrilling and adventurous and a little creepy and a little spoopy and a little creepy and the ood involved was very ood and it was just a good two-part episode a lot of the two-part episodes i'm just like can we just make this into one and just move past the storyline. The Impossible Planet, I really wanted to know more about it. I wanted to learn more about its history, about 
why it's been there more. I wanted, I wanted to know more about it, and I wanted to know more about the stories of everyone on it. And I just dug that episode to its core. Now in short, on 10, I'm really appreciating his humor. I really enjoy David Tennant's energy. There's something very fun about him, and I really like him as the Doctor. I really enjoy the way that he puts his spin on the Doctor, where he is, at this point now, I feel like, where he's trying to get over everything that happened with Gallifrey, and he's trying to become a better person and to grow from his experiences in the same way that Rose is doing. And I think the Doctor's learning from Rose, and I think at the same time he's also trying to cope. And so he puts on this facade of constant happy and smiles and jokes. And I like that approach to the Doctor. I also just watched the Christmas special and it made me really sad because I love Donna and I just want to be in her season because I want her to be the companion forever and she's just perfect. In every single way Donna is just perfect. And about Rose's farewell, that really just messed me up. That she wanted nothing more than to be with the doctor for the rest of her life but then she got stuck in another reality which stinks but at the same time I know that it was best for her because I think that she needed to start her life and get it going with the people that meant the most to her and who she meant the most to because if she had stayed with the Doctor forever she undoubtedly would have had a fate much like Amy and Rory or like Donna or like many of the other companions that have come before the Doctor where they kind of just got hurt and couldn't really continue with him for various reasons. And so I think in some way it was almost good that Rose got to have a brand new start in another life and that she got to get away from the Doctor and get to create her own reality from the reality that she had been exposed to exploring the universe. I know that's really deep for a television show but I feel like this is one of those shows that you can go deep with and you can really experience a lot of heavy emotions and come out feeling good. So that is my season 2 recap. I hope that you guys liked it. I know that a couple of you last time commented that you wanted more of these videos so I do plan on doing one for every single season I'll kind of recap them all. I'm going to be starting into Martha. I know that Jacob doesn't like Martha very much. My friend Julian likes Martha. I've not really ever heard anything super positive about Martha. So I'm going to go in with a positive mind and I'm not going to think badly about her and I'm going to hope for the very best. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all again next time. Peace out. Thank you much.